We're live. Hey guys, welcome to the Alianza Institute of Arts in partnership with Integra Business School. And this is from our sponsor, Prime, the course Proficiency in Management and Entrepreneurship. And what we're giving you is a free micro lecture on entrepreneurship. So it's nice, it's quick, it's fast. You can just leave it playing on the audio and just listen to it. And hopefully it will provide you with something of value in the next 10 or so minutes of the day and can help you out. All right, so uh, this is me, upper right. Uh, uh, my name is uh, Rob Pengson. I'm a chef. I'm also a, uh, a professor of uh, beginner's entrepreneurship and management classes. I also teach leadership, and I am a fan of our finance department's classes. And I am a uh, head teacher of the entrepreneurship department, and I'm delivering this, uh, this micro lecture for you guys. And today's topic is something that I, I really enjoy. It's uh, the 4M framework. All right, so uh, what we're going to discuss today is the 4M framework for entrepreneurship. Uh, this is really great if you're new to entrepreneurship. If you have bad feelings about entrepreneurship, if you have bad experiences about entrepreneurship, um, hey, maybe this is just what you need today. So for today, we're going to go through the four M's. Uh, these four M's were created by uh, yours truly for the Alianza Integra School of Business. And we use these four M's as a framework for beginning entrepreneurs to be able to, uh, to navigate the world no, in real life and really understand where they are in their journey and what tools, principles, uh, and laws they can put to their benefit that they can use so they can become effective in what they're trying to accomplish. So let's start it. 4M framework begins with mindset, the market, the model, and the money. So let's talk quickly about mindset because that's very important. Uh, originally, the first M was me. And when we say me, that's you, the entrepreneur. But uh, what we want to do is have a better mindset about entrepreneurship. And for non-entrepreneurs, they look at entrepreneurship. Many non-entrepreneurs see entrepreneurship as just people making money, uh, you know, opportunistic, uh, trying to st trying to churn a profit. While churning a profit is, is is one of the goals of entrepreneurship, I think it's very important to understand the on the, the other probably more meaningful uh, aspects of why entrepreneurs do what they do. And when you speak to true entrepreneurs, you know, season they made good success. They failed maybe a few times. Uh, they're building things is uh, that they have a mindset of positivity. So let's go through it one by one. Uh, entrepreneurship is, uh, yes, it's about making money and uh, profit because without profit, guess what? We can't pay your salaries, the salaries of the employees, uh, especially now in times of crisis like what we're going through. It's, uh, if, we did, if there was no money coming in or you know, there would be no uh, help for the employees at this time, um, so in that sense, uh, you know, yeah, money is very important. It's an important metric to measure whether the efforts are being rewarded by the target market because without, uh, without a positive uh, financial outcome at the end of every period, uh, it will not sustain. And if you're not sustaining anything that you want to do, any enterprise that you want to want to endeavor for it it becomes uh, a waste of time no? so you have to make sure that it's sustainable and oh, next let's talk about a meaningful life okay what is a meaningful life have you ever asked yourself what a meaningful life is well we tend to explore this a lot in our classroom and we go through a lot of uh, philosophers and existentialists and professors and writers and authors and many ideas throughout the history of mankind you know we start very we, we look for wisdom in uh, from the start of the Roman Empire. We look for wisdom in the Bible, in Christianity. We look for wisdom in different CEOs and, and see and try to correlate what makes a meaningful life. And a lot of the answers that we get based on our research is that what makes a meaningful life is, one, when you can decrease the suffering of other people and yourself. 
uh, because life is difficult. You know, life is difficult. We have to go. Th- there's a lot of poverty around us. There's a lot of suffering. There's a lot of problems. Entrepreneurship, a good entrepreneurial mindset, decreases suffering uh, through their products and innovations and services. Uh, basically, sometimes what we call it is they they provide solutions, modern day solutions to to modern day problems where the old solutions are quickly becoming obsolete. And uh, a meaningful life is all about changing and improving life for other people. And next also, it's also about being honest with yourself. Uh, A lot of the times uh, when people enter entrepreneurship classes, uh, they might have very big egos, inflated egos. There's a lot of the self at play. Uh, However, when you uh, it's a very difficult enterprise to 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 enter a life of entrepreneurship and create create something in the world that's supposed to make life better. So when you're honest with yourself, uh, you also learn about your negative habits and how you can keep them in check. Uh, if you have any uh, biases that are making you a difficult person to work with, if you have any biases that are making you uh, less effective in achieving goals or working with others, uh, we try to find these these things and try to eliminate them or make you aware about them so that you can you can choose to uh, work on them so that you can work better with other people and of course achieve what it is that you're trying to achieve. And uh, next, uh, the mindset's all also about setting goals. Uh, if you don't have any goals, I can tell you what your bank account is like. That's what some people say. Uh, no goals, no purpose in life. Um, setting goals and being very clear about the goals, uh, writing them down, being strategic about them, and vetting them against yourself is also very important. So we do that a lot in the mindset portion of the first M. And finally, um, entrepreneurship, it's not just about making money. It's having the life that you want. It's having the day that you want. It's having the schedule that you want. So you can choose the field where in which you work. You know, it could be food and beverage like me or education like me. It could be beauty. It could be digital marketing, creating videos. It could be tech, programming, making software. Uh, It could be sports. And having the life that you want and making that life mean something for you, but at the same time uh, generate a profit and an income for the business and for the people that work with you. And having a good mindset entering entrepreneurship is crucial. Because without the good, without the proper and healthy mindset, you will lack the fuel to endure the journey, which can be very difficult. So let's leave this frame now, and I want to ask you: Is uh, what mindsets do you have that are kind of dragging you back? Um, it's not all about you; it's about us with other people. So you have to keep that into account. Uh, is your ego controlling you, or do you have control of your ego? Are your biases so strong that you cannot listen to logic and reason from other people? So these are the questions that we ask ourselves about, especially during the mindset exercise and uh, framework. What we want to do is become more receptive to others and the world around us because it's the world around us that we're trying to help. Okay, so a lot of the first M is all about me. It's all about you. It's all about what's inside you. And when we step outside of the you, then we begin to, then we begin our relationship with the market. And this is a very important relationship between you and the market that you serve. Uh, The market is the industry that you choose. It could be medical and you niche it down lower. It could be uh, kidney dialysis or tests. It could be food and beverage are you delivery fast food fine dining it could be hospitality are you air airbnb now it's kind of difficult are are you logistics are you now making your own platform for food deliveries Uh, so ultimately it's the market that you choose Uh, and then the second m it's all about the other people the market the industry that you choose Uh, very important to understand that different industries have different profit margins and profitabilities and incomes. Usually the industry that you choose, uh, the incumbents or the current players in that industry, they share the same problems. So the airline industry might have very low margins versus uh, the food industry used to. I don't know about now, no, but the food industry used to have higher margins. But then obviously when uh, 
you know, things change, things change. And then once you understand the market more, the industry, uh, you start to niche yourself to a to a better uh, segment of the market. Then you realize who your target audience is, and you have to be very attuned with your target audience because these are the people who reward you. They reward you with their sales. They reward you with their willingness to pay. Uh, as an entrepreneur, you create value, you know, and you don't decide which what the value is. Just because you like something doesn't mean it's going to sell. More often than not, I bet you, just because you like something, it probably will not sell because you're not buying your own product. And if you buy your own product, you're doomed. So ultimately, the, pe the people that are buying your product or your service are your target audience, and you want to make sure that it's valuable for them. But they're not going to tell you it's valuable for them, right? It's kind of difficult. It's very difficult. So what do you do? Obviously, you can ask for feedback. But the best feedback that your target audience give, gives you is repeat sales. It's a willingness to pay for your product um, in relation to all the other products out there, all the other substitutes. And when, your target, when you can find a way that your target audience actually re rewards you with their willingness to pay for your product, then you may have a good product and you may scale upward, young entrepreneur, and uh, go on, but just be very careful that you don't get uh, you don't get too overconfident. Because many an entrepreneur, with a few successes, they get overconfident and they make rash decisions. So we talk about that in the class with lots of different cases. Um, also, failure is also part of the whole process. And if you fail and you quit, it's quite you're shortchanging yourself because you know that's just the best lesson. You failed, you quit. You may have failed, but you learned a good lesson. And that makes you a wiser, more experienced entrepreneur. And if you quit the whole process right there, then you just cut your progress in the time when life was teaching you the most valuable lessons. And then finally, there is business strategy. We talk about business strategy a lot when you talk about the market. Uh, you have to understand things like the Porter's Five Forces, uh, different business strategy for incumbents, uh, there's such a thing as disruptive innovation, low-cost innovation, uh, new market innovation. And also if you're an incumbent or if you're a current player, you have to protect yourself against new entrants or copycats because there will always be new entrants and copycats. And you have to find, you have to navigate the barriers to entry and also make some barriers to entry for yourself. Okay, so question for you is, what market are you part of? Is that market that you or industry that you're part of, is it really the industry you want to be with? Is it profitable? How is it? Are there too many players? Is it saturated? If there are, which area of it can you pivot to so that maybe it's easier for you? There's more of an opportunity there. Uh, are there uh, other businesses that you can tie up with? Uh, this is very difficult, especially for those of you who are passionate about something. Uh, you get very, you get tunnel vision, no? But you have to be open and receptive to opportunities around you because you don't want to limit yourself. Uh, you can always choose one market, but uh, having multiple legs, so to speak, uh, gives you a uh, good balance, especially in times of crisis like this, where it's one leg, two legs get knocked off. Uh, you still have the other legs to stand up in, and that's very important. And speaking of legs, not those kind of legs, guys. Speaking of legs, once you understand your mindset, once you understand your market, aha, uh -huh, then you go to this guy. It's the model. And the Integra Alianza, the Alianza Integra School of Business is very much into the model. Uh, once you do your research on yourself, once you do your research on the market, it's the model plays a very, very big deal because here, uh, we if you can't articulate your plan for yourself, it's very difficult to lead a team and rally a team to help you achieve that vision that uh, which you set out for the company. So being able to articulate your plan in uh, multiple languages such as operations, HR, finance, marketing, strategy, product, uh, PR, when you're able to articulate your plan well, um, it's easier to grow because you yourself have a clear vision. While it may change and it should change and models will change, uh, there's a saying, no, you can plan for a fight, but the moment you get hit in the face, all plans go out the window. But still, it's very important to have a plan because you have to stick to it. 
without a plan. You're just like a useless rudder. You're arbitrarily going around the world and you're wasting time, which is your most valuable resource. resource. So that's wrong. Stop it. Have a plan. Work it. Adjust when you need. Recalibrate when you need. So anyway, that's where the vision, mission, objectives come in. Core values, we talk about that. Our case studies also have a lot of uh, key result areas per team member. Uh, when and when not to get a co-founder. Uh, next, we also talk about the business can the business model canvas. Um, talk a little bit about product, product market fix. Okay, remember, I'll say it again. The people who say your product is great are your customers. And they might not tell you verbally, although if they review you, great. Always also accept negative criticism and feedback as a good point to improve your product. Don't take it personally. However, willingness to pay is the best metric for product market fit. And if the same customers keep on buying your product again and again and again and again, as long as they're not your relatives and friends doing you a favor, then you may have good product market fit. All right, so we talk about that, and there's a lot of case studies that we go through with that class as well. And then there's your marketing model. Uh, you have to know how to market and sell your product. You might have the best product, but if you can't market it, properly uh, you're going to be burning money really fast we talk about the delivery system the operations having a team is very important you can't do everything yourself uh, you're going to burn out if you're doing everything yourself you're not a business you know that's self-employed you're not going to be able to scale ultimately having a team and having systems and managing your resources that's what the model section is all about so remember this third m it's very important it's basically how you will achieve now your vision and, if I may, what's your model that you have now? Is it efficient? Is it effective? Is it costing you a lot? Are there a lot of inefficiencies? Are you getting things done? So, review your model. See what you need. See what you don't need. Uh, ultimately, you got to make it efficient and effective. And eventually, once you understand your mindset, understand the market, understand the model, uh, we move into the money. And uh, that's the fourth M the money and when we talk about the money that's everything to do with the cash no everything from profitability or financial model so let's go through it one one at a time no when we talk about finance and money a lot of you it goes over your head it's intimidating uh at the alianza institute uh, at the alianza integral school of business we want to make it nice and fun easy to understand um, anyone can understand it right away so it's quite simple but it is tedious because we have to have some discipline, you know. It's not just easy and fun and games. You have to have some discipline. So understanding the financial model in its most simplest form is we start with the income statement. There are three major statements, no? The income statement, the cash flow, and the balance sheet. Uh, we start with the income statement because you just have to make sure, first and foremost, that uh, you have to understand your margins when it comes to pricing your product. You have to understand... If you're selling and making more money than you're spending, which is very important when you're running a business because you want to be able to sustain it. And next up, we also talk about valuations uh, covered in the class. You can do your own research. Uh, we use net present value or NPV. You can research that. Uh, it's a way to understand the valuation of a project based on with the time element involved. No? And then we also use the internal rate of return, or the IRR, and we teach you how to calculate that as well. Uh, this lecture is too short to go through those, but you can you can Google that, or uh, you can search that. It's the uh, NPV, net present value, and the internal rate of return, IRR. And then we have different strategies to valuation, and we share cases of how other entrepreneurs did their valuations of their company. Um, so there's the valuation of the company, basically, is how much is your idea worth? And if people are going to start investing in you, how much is your idea worth compared to the cash that they put in? Uh, so if it's just your idea, that's what we call a pre-money valuation of your company. And then the mo but however, most of the time when valuation is discussed, it's a post-money valuation. Post-money valuation means when money comes in. So understanding valuation is a very crucial point in especially negotiating with your potential investors and uh, where you're going to get your funding. Next up, we make a simple deck, a uh, simple deck for you to understand, for your employees, future employees to understand, and also to share with your investors who are coming in. We There is also the fundraising process, which has to be done properly. 
Uh, do you want to get smart money or just money or kind money or magulo money? My gosh. Uh, well, the moment you start accepting money from other people, you know, it's like you go to bed with them, so to speak. So choosing the right, choosing the right people is great. Um, and then there's the terms and conditions. In our class, there is so much cases that, you know, uh, good friends end up fighting and becoming worse enemies. It happens again and again. And I kid you not, in every class, there is that same, there is that same story. 80% of the population of the class. But there is that 20% where they work well, you know, like sisters, brothers working well together, siblings working well together, friends still working well together. And having a solid amount of uh, terms and conditions, which we can call co-founders agreement, uh, shareholders agreement, there could be investors agreement. Having these agreements in place, uh, a lot of people forego it. They say, ay, mamaya na yan. <laughs> Honestly, no. If you want to save your relationships and really have good relationships with the people that you work with, that invest in you, that work with you, having good terms and conditions from the get-go is extremely crucial. So having discipline with going about this whole process is important. Okay, it's important. Stop arbitrarily doing things every day without a plan. Have the day that you want. Be deliberate. Be deliberate. Be consistent. Be receptive to change. You don't have all the answers. No one does. However, if you're not willing to learn, you're not willing to, sh to, to show the discipline, you're not willing to put in the discipline, rather, uh, you're never going to get anywhere uh, worthwhile because anything worthwhile is difficult to have and you have to work at it, okay? So terms and conditions needed. Maintain your relationships. Terms and conditions required. Next up, uh, there's project management. In, a, in an ideal world, you get all your fundraising at once, but how often does that happen? Not very often. So once you get your project management, you'll have to learn concepts such as bootstrapping and, and, and unleashing minimum viable products. So you can start to generate revenue while you're at the same time you're fundraising. It's a complicated process, and opening your mind to this process of uh, growing, scaling, establishing yourself is critical. And last but not the least, uh, in the money, there is always change in crisis management. The most consistent thing is change. We're all experiencing change now. And uh, so having, understanding, um, how do you say this? Uh, going through cases rather, going through cases where other people have been upended in business and some people, some companies have failed, some firms have survived, some firms have succeeded. Uh, being able to read about articles or, or cover case studies in our classes, such as case studies and uh, discussions about how people uh, negotiated change and what happened afterwards. And when you learn from other people, you're, you get good stories and good insight. You can have multiple lenses when you approach your own crisis and your own change management. All right, guys. So that's it. So I hope that helped you out. Uh, that's the 4M of entrepreneurship if you're getting into it. Uh, look into your mindset, look into the market, look into the model, and learn a little bit about the money. Now, some questions for you is, what negative ideas do you have tied with entrepreneurship and making money? Where did they come from and what can you do about it? Question number two, how can you make life better for a specific group of people? This could be your product or your service. How? What problems now are around you that you have solutions for that people might be willing to pay for? Next up, how can you be disciplined and scientific as you approach the entrepreneurial and management of a business? Okay, you don't want to uh, you don't want to shoot shoot from the hip uh, and do random uh, decisions or go forward arbitrarily without no rhyme or reason. You cannot. You cannot. You cannot. You simply cannot. Uh, being more uh, disciplined and scientific in your approach, uh, it's, it's, it's proven effective. It's data-driven. It's uh, You look at empirical data, you make adjustments, you see what works, you hypothesize, and then you get rewarded by answers based on a series of testing every day, just small little tests. So how can you be more disciplined and scientific as you approach business? And what can you do today to make your life better? So that's it, guys. Those are my questions. Thanks very much. Uh, this is part of week one of the entrepreneurial framework. Uh, obviously, it gets more complicated than that in class. It's an entire week. 
Uh, I'm going to give you free micro lectures like this. Uh, I believe I'm going to give you nine because I'm going to base it out of every week of the Prime course out loud. Now, Prime stands for Proficiency in Management and Entrepreneurship. Okay. If you want to check it out, you can go visit AlianzaInstitute.com uh, and look for the Prime course. It's right there. Uh, we used to have this class live. Now we're going to have it online. Uh, it's going to be a combination of uh, asynchronous videos that can be uh, consumed anytime, but we will also have a synchronous online class session, uh, which will discuss the case and the lessons every week. All right, guys. So cheers. Ciao. Thanks very much. I hope you guys enjoyed. Have a good day. And from the Alianza, Insti uh, from the Alianza Institute and Integra Business School,